Hello and welcome to Tathastu. Today we will be uh, discussing the first question for Tathastu Satrap initiative where we will be discussing the first question for science and technology. Now regarding the sequence of the question, we are, uh, I have been taking questions which are from 2022 initially. Now in any case, if you find any question which is, which you feel needs to be discussed, you can drop a suggestion in the comments section and then we will try to bring that up in our discussion. I will be following the sequence from 2022 papers as of now. All right. So the first question which I came across which I felt was relevant for our discussion is this question which talks about qubit. Now let me remind you again of our first discussion where we talked about the syllabus. Now what was there in the syllabus? There was awareness of computers. Right? There was awareness of computers. So now see UPSC. UPSC has just asked you context of the term qubit. So this is a fairly direct question which does not require anything more than awareness. All right? So let's talk about qubits now. Now this answer is very obvious for all of us that it is qubit so quantum computing this I am very sure all of us must know let's start dissecting this term first quantum computing now what is quantum what is computing what is quantum computing and that why is it so different from the whole trend of computing that we have been doing. So basically quantum we must have studied there are packets of light known as photons. Quantums are basically photons. The photons are transmitted in packets of light and those are quantums. Now basically what happens in quantum the unit is qubit. Qubit is the size of that packet. So that is quantum. Now as of the concept of quantum computing, this is not very relevant. Let's switch over to what is quantum computing. Now you must have heard of terms like supercomputers also. Okay. These are also very fast. Every day we are reading newspaper that uh, this speed has been achieved. So many petaflops have been achieved. So many gigaflops have been achieved. Then why separately go for quantum computing? Now let's take an example. Now you have one. We are taking an example from chemistry. This ca this Use this example to relate it to all other fields including metrology, including biology, DNA, uh, reproduction, everything quantum computing can be applied. Let's see how. So now basically I will first show you how a supercomputer works and then we will try to see what a quantum computer does. We will talk about the units of the quantum computer and everything but now let's just focus on the concept of quantum computing. Okay. So first let's talk about supercomputers. Now I have a chemical reaction here taking place alright. I need to add 5 grams of HCl and 5 grams of NaOH that is sodium hydroxide and then we will get NaCl, Tata Namak. Alright. We will be getting NaCl here with this reaction. Okay. Now, supercomputers, what will they do? Instead of this 5, if we are going for 5.00001, and instead of this 5, that is for NaOH, if we are going for 4.00000999, no, so what the supercomputer can do is it can predict this that if there is a minutest change in the uh, concentration or if there is minutest change in any form of the conditions of the existing atmosphere if we increase the temperature if we increase the heat if uh, if we increase the pressure 
or if we increase the volume of this container everything can be predicted by the supercomputer supercomputer can do everything computational because it has multiple processes all of them processing 0 or 1 0 or 1 0 or 1 because those are the units in which supercomputers operate it's 0 or 1 like it has to be either of these two we'll we'll get to that later so uh, this can be predicted by a supercomputer okay every kind of minute reactions that are about to happen every kind of minutest things that will happen in this container this can be predicted by the supercomputer then why do we need a quantum computer now in this side one test tube we will put like this and the other we will drop like this there is a rigorous change in the direction of the molecules the each of the molecule is following its own sweet dance of life some will go like this 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 okay when they enter this beaker when if the angle of this NAC, uh, NaOH is tilted or the angle of this HCl is tilted there will also be changes in the reaction that is taking place here the product form will also be different the compound may have a different consistency a different feel a different uh, touch all these things will change but that cannot be predicted by a supercomputer and i am talking about a very 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 basic example if we go further when we talk about molecular engineering when we talk about dna when we are trying to figure out the movement of the peptide chains or the uh, we'll talk about dna in the subsequent classes but all those minutest of things where the behavior of each molecule has to be judged that cannot be done by supercomputers supercomputers are very smart but they get confused they have things overlapping over them and they have things going over their uh, data and because of this their memory gets clouded and they are unable to process this kind of dance all right and for that we need quantum computing and that is why i asked i use the first term metrology climate and all these things the events of the atmosphere cyclones tsunamis all this cannot be predicted by a supercomputer it's only a quantum computer which can predict it and thereby the application part the technology part of quantum computing is very 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 diverse that is why upsc has asked you this question regarding qubits qubit is simply it's the unit in which quantum computers are measured like uh, normal computers are measured in bits or flops or something like that we have our uh, memory chip is 64 gb or something like that or those are bits but here we have qubits because quantum quantum's qu has been taken to bit that's all that's just a unit okay moving on to now this qubit as of our examination perspective is not very relevant but let's still discuss it in terms of how this qubit is different from any other form so basically normal computing when we use bits all right in bits what happens is there are three possibilities all right there is uh, there are four possibilities there is 0 0 only 0 and 1 composed bits there are by b i means 2 which means only 0 or 1 the processing in is done only in terms of 0 and 1 so basically in bits you can get four possibilities it's either 0 0 0 1 1 0 or 1 1 these are the only things which are possible in any bit but what is different with qubits is Now, in bits, you any one of these states can be processed. All right. When when we are inputting one data, when we input some data into the processor, what the computer does is it takes every information and converts them into this form: 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, or something like that. All right. But it will process each of these individually and give an output accordingly this output is again decoded and entered into our language 
all right that is done in the later stage of processing again that is too much specificity we do not need that much for our examination point of view let's talk about what qubits do qubits have this unique feature known as superposition now what is superposition and then we'll discuss about how it is different from what a computer does so basically suppose you have this maze okay i am making this maze where this is the entry point and this is the exit point all right and here there is one s like like there are multiple possibilities of the road that can be taken of the road that can be taken in this maze there are multiple roads and you have to figure out a way out of this maze all right this is the way you have to figure out okay this is the kind of thing that we do it comes in newspapers and all we have to enter from this point and we have to exit from this point and there are multiple roads and linings which are there now what a super computer will do or what any normal computer when we are processing by bits is each road will be discovered okay we will try to figure out each road of exiting and then figure out which is the right road to exit this maze but this is done one at a time okay so multiple computers will take up this and the multiple roads will be figured out but one at a time what a qubit is able to do is it can take 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 all at once so what it will do is it will go from here to there it will start exploring all together so that is why it is able to achieve superposition all right it's able to achieve superposition which means that all of this can be achieved at once and that is why the qubit is able to process so much information at once because it has this ability of superposition apart from that there is something known as entanglement feature we have knots in our hairs sometimes we tie it sometimes a wool is lost in one entangled mess the qubit is able to process that entanglement and it is able to multidimensionally analyze so if you are able to view a knot from all directions then you will be able to resolve it more quickly and more easily because we can see only three sides our vision is not multidimensional that is why when we go to uh, open up knots then it is a difficulty for us because we are not able to view from an all angles similar is the case with a rubik's cube i'm sure all of us all of us must have solved those rubik's cubes where there is like there is this cube where there are boxes and then you have to arrange according to colors and all that again uh, it's just an example so what a quantum computer can do is it can view the rubik's cube from all the ends all at once so that is why this feature of entanglement is also resolved all right so that is the difference between a qubit and a bit moving on we'll now discuss about what quantum computers are basically doing what is the whole funda what is the what are they basically composed of and everything as you know in case of any any computer or anything there is a hardware and then there is a software right so quantum computers are also working in that aspect only we will also discuss about india's role because as you know 8000 crore has been allocated for national quantum computing uh, quantum computers and technology initiative okay so that has been done we are doing too much to improve this quantum computing space as you have noticed that it has so much of application so india has been allocating uh, 8000 crores and there are 21 quantum hubs which are being developed in the country there are four quantum research parks which have been developed across the country and then there are uh, there is a lot of allocation everything is going on it's still in process so let's see what's this whole why how this thing is working how is this aspect working now hardware 
as you have seen that there is a lot of processing going on we talked about how quantum computers are doing everything like they are they are able to predict so much now how are they going to do this so their hardware is doing immense amount of work and that is why their hardware has to be maintained at a temperature somewhere around 0 kelvin minus I mean 0 Kelvin plus 1 by 100 of a Celsius. This is what the temperature the hardware has to be maintained because of the complex calculations that quantum computers are doing. Again this is not very relevant because it is too much detail you do not need it for your mains but there might be a random prelims question about coolers alright. So that might be asked so that is this is why I told you about this 0 Kelvin aspect. So, 0 Kelvin as you know is absolute zero temperature somewhere around minus 243 degree Celsius. Nothing can go cooler than this and this is the kind of temperature that we are maintaining alright. So, this has to be mentioned. Now, software of quantum computers it is simple one thin wafer chip wafer chips lace chips like that is one wafer chip that is it. But the hardware is like huge there are rooms and rooms of uh, processors but all of them what they are doing is simply they are trying to maintain the coolness the cooling of the whole system because the system is operating at such high temperatures. The system gets heated up like us only when we use too much of our brains we get heated up sometimes we are slapping somebody sometimes we are bursting out. So, what is happening we are getting heated up we need to cool down. How do we cool down? We cool down by breathing, meditation and all these things. Quantum computers, they need to be cooled down artificially because they are machines. We are humans. Alright. So, moving on. What is India doing? Now, this is the whole hardware software specification. Not very relevant for our exam basics is important and we have done the basics that is all you do not have to get into details of how the processing is taking place as I said it is very 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 complex it is almost like our human mind all right but where we are able to perceive that okay the depth of something is this much the height of something is this much the width is this much we are going we can explore things from dimensions multidimensionality is a characteristic of human mind even quantum computers can do it lesser than humans but we are not able to process it to that extent or even if we are processing it we are unable to put it as output. So again that is a different discussion a different time well, let us get back to our national quantum computing mission India has allocated 8000 crores for our national uh, quantum computing mission Techno uh, the mission is called quantum technology and application mission for quantum technologies and applications where a sum of 8000 crore has been allocated and this was done in 2020 budget because of which i think it was a part of the questions serious uh, it's come in a series of questions till 2022 the reason is this only we have developed four research parks There are various hubs which have been developed and also government has launched an initiative which is known as QSIM. Now QSIM is very important because it is something which has been developed for citizens like you and me. If you and me any of us can do anything in quantum computing we can get ourselves enrolled in this QSIM initiative where we can uh, like we will we'll get connected to the interface of the com uh, of India's uh, quantum computing hub and we can do research and development in this quantum computing space. This you can get enrolled I will give you the email id where you have to drop a mail you have to drop a mail at qcwork at cdac dot in this is the mail id where you have to drop a mail okay this is qc workbench qc workbench 
at cdac.in. So if you have a basic understanding of Python or all these programming languages of which UPSC has no relevance as of now. Uh, so we can drop a mail over there and we can get connected to the quantum computing hub of India. It's a quantum computing toolkit project. It's a quantum computing toolkit project, the QSIM initiative. You have to get connected to this. It's a toolkit initiative for quantum computing. Again, this is too much detail, but the whole idea is mission for quantum computing technologies and applications. All right. So even if you want, you can explore this space. You can get uh, enrolled yourself in the QSIM initiative. This is something you can do. Again, as we talked about the syllabus, development of Indians. So this is an initiative of development for Indians in quantum computing. So this is something which is important. Let's now discuss about national Com quantum computing mission. The quantum computing mission, no, quantum technologies mission, right? So quantum technologies, we have themes. We have four themes. In this quantum technologies mission, where we are going in spaces of communication, we are going for computing, then we are going for uh, sensing and metrology and sensing and metrology. And we're talking about simulation. These are the four hubs in which quantum technologies will be explored by the Indian government in our national quantum computing mission for quantum technologies and applications. So this is what we have. And as of now, this was what we could discuss under this lecture. We will be talking about cloud services in another question. Let us now discuss about visible light communication and then we will discuss about wireless communication. There is not a lot to know about all this but visible light communication is very simple to understand. Simple. Break every term. Visible light communication. technology right this was the question visible light communication technology so what are we doing in visible light communication there is a visible light just like this white light there is one tube in your house there is one visible light source in your house in whatever place you are studying there is a visible light visible source of light what we are doing is we are using this visible light for communication how the visible light will actually carry information with itself or it may also carry internet wireless communication some form of communication waves okay in just a room like this when there is just one tube light which is on with there is one led bulb which is on it's actually projecting internet it is working as an internet source just like our wireless communication the volant the lawn that we have local area wireless network that we have similar to that we can do that with the help of visible light visible light is nothing but an electromagnetic wave which is capable of carrying information which is capable of carrying information and that information will be used as a internet source okay as of now we'll be discussing this only about visible light there is another question in 2018 or 17 uh, about this visible light communication that we'll be discussing in detail then wireless communication technology now this is very simple to understand wireless communication technology is very simple to understand simple there is you must have seen this device you must have all played with this device. 
and this is these are coconut shells okay these are coconut shells we all used to talk yeah some somebody used to speak from here and we would put a ear over here and we were able to hear this sound this is wired communication technique so i am not sure how many of you must have seen landline phones you must have seen it in your bollywood movies or maybe in hollywood movies where we used to use a wire a wired telephone which was like you know it had a proper receiver and everything i am talking in this manner because i know there are millennials who might have never come across that kind of telephone so that is why i have to discuss in this format anyways for those of who are aware you must have seen there were wires there was you could disconnect the phone by just pulling out the wire because you were breaking the circuit that was closed circuit okay you had a circuit for everything all right you had a circuit for everything the the whole when the circuit was complete only then communication could be transferred from here to there okay this was what is what is done in wired communication technology but now we have discovered wireless communication technology where the signals are transmitted via waves this could be microwaves this could be light waves as we discussed right now this could be electro uh, electromagnetic again light waves are electromagnetic waves this could also be radio waves when we are listening to the radio i am not sure if you all have come across the radio also but also youtube when we watch youtube then what happens in youtube we receive the signals there is a signal broadcasted from tathastu office it is broadcasted and your phone has a receiver for it it receives those signals and telecasts what i am telling you in your screen that is what is wireless communication i am communicating to you without any wires so this is wireless communication again we will be discussing about that in detail in upcoming questions so this is what this question was all about with this we end today's video thank you for watching